Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. This evening, this evening's guest is Brad Smith of Web Visions. Hello. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the Web Visions conference. Well, we've been doing it for nine years now. We started it in 2001 and uh, st- started with a uh, one speaker, and now we're at over 50 speakers. And so we're just um, happy to have it at the Oregon Convention Center, May 20th through 22nd, and. So I read that the first Web Visions was in an old converted church with no air conditioning. Yes, that is right. Yeah, we uh, we still have fond memories of that. People come uh, who are there uh, say, "You remember that that first one? You know, <laughs> where we were all like dying of like heat stroke. Mm-hmm. They had these gigantic fans going. It sounded like uh, you know there was an aircraft taking off right there." And how uh, many people <clears throat> came to that first Web Visions? It was fun. I think that we had about, uh, oh, about 150 people, 140, mm-hmm. somewhere around there. And how many do you expect at this year's? Well, we were aiming for 1,000. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, I think with the economy, it's like been, uh, been harder to get people to... A bit of a downturn. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, we, we, get, we get quite a few people from out of region. And the people coming from uh, east of the Mississippi, uh, that kind of number is is a little lower this year. So what kind of a <clears throat> conference is it? What is it that people can hope to learn and experience at the Web Visions conference? Well, we explore the future of the web. And so um, we look at design technology, user experience, and business strategy. And we, um, one of the speakers from the second year, Jesse James Garrett from Adaptive Path, um, had a presentation about... Uh, how to understand where the future is going, and um, and so what we do is we try to we ask people to take you know do sessions, workshops, panels on th- on things that they're excited about and things that they think uh, they see that where the trends are going for the web. And so um, he said that if you look at the people now who are on the bleeding edge, mm-hmm. that those people right now, five years from now, it'll become something that's you know, common practice or mainstream. And so if you want to look at tr- things that are that are kind of co- common now um, or in the, in five years from now in the future, that you got to look at the people who are doing the really cutting edge work now. So um, a lot of the presentations are range from doing things like uh, looking at uh, uh, the direction for mobile mm-hmm. and... Uh, is that what Raven Zachary is coming yeah. to talk about? Yeah, he's going to be talking about iPhone intelligence. Uh, we have uh, Jason Grigsby from Cloud4, mm-hmm. and he's going to be doing uh, a session on mobile and a workshop as well. So, you know, the great thing is that that with all of these uh, speakers, they, um, they're they kind of people that you want to have in your living room. or on the, Some of them are yeah. people I have had in my yes, living room. Yes, that's yeah. absolutely true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was going through this and I was like, oh, I know, I know them. And yeah. oh, look at that. Yay. Um, but then you have four keynote speakers as well. Yeah, we have, uh, we have uh, four keynotes scattered throughout the, the, the three days. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, we have uh, kicking it off um, Thursday morning, Jared Spool, who's going to be doing a session on um, uh, gourmet, cooking up gourmet user experiences on a beer budget. Uh, and uh, it's then a catchy he, title. yeah, yeah, and and Jared's always a, a entertaining keynote. He did did a keynote about I think four years ago uh, at Web Visions, and um, he he just uh, he he really has his finger on the pulse of where things are going, and um, and he's a good storyteller, um, and that that makes for a good keynote. And then uh, the Thursday afternoon keynote we have is uh, Mark Frauenfelder from Boing Boing. And Mark is, uh, I've followed him for a long time when uh, they used to print Boing Boing magazine. And we actually uh, were digging through our archives. We found an old Boing Boing magazine, and it was uh, pretty hilarious. He had, like, little spot illustrations, and it had that kind of uh, retro, 
you know, look that was mm -hmm. popular back in the 90s. And, um, and now that they're doing it online, it's like, I think, the most popular blog, uh, boingboing.net. And he's Everybody got Everybody knows it. Yeah. And he's got a new book coming out. And uh, he's also editor-in-chief of Make Magazine. So he's going to talk about the, uh, the future of making. Mm -hmm. So, and then the last keynotes, uh, Ryan Sims and uh, another Brad Smith, uh, the uh, president of uh, Verb.com, they're going to come and talk about the uh, Carpe, uh, Carpe Futurum. It's about the future of building online communities. So that very should be nice. really, very cool. That yeah. should be very, very interesting. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So you guys are doing some things that I haven't heard other people doing. I, I, you're sponsoring a beer and blog or two? Yeah, two beer and blogs. We're going to do one the 17th of April and the 15th of May. You should go to those beer and blogs. I mean, you should always go to beer and blog, but you should definitely go to those beer and blogs. But you're also hosting, on the first day of the conference, a Lunch 2.0. Yeah. How did that come about? Well, we uh, we just, uh, I think that all of these things, it's it's amazing that uh, the communities have really grown up um, and around these these uh, social activities with uh, Lunch 2.0 and beer and blog. And I think there's like a, a, a yearning to for people to just, you know, to talk about things that they care about in a really casual mm -hmm. atmosphere, and so we talked to um, talked to them about doing it, and we thought it'd be kind of great to to just support as many uh, kind of local um, uh, social networking, you know, groups, mm -hmm. uh, even ones that meet face to face, and so that's why I wanted to do a lunch 2.0, uh, co coinciding with um, with web visions we're also doing um bike hugger mo mobile social for the second year with uh dl byron from textura design he's coming down from seattle and we're doing um we're working with carrie bugby who started the social media um club mm -hmm. so we've got a, you know we're just trying to do a lot of things that uh, we're trying to incorporate or bring in a lot of groups here that are doing some pretty cool stuff so what would you say was the main reason that you started? Because you started the conference. Yeah, um, uh, myself and uh, a j guy named uh, Jeffrey Hiller, mm -hmm. uh, who's a top photographer in town. And uh, <clears throat> the first year um, was one where Jeffrey said, you know, I know uh, uh, Jeffrey Zeldman. Um, why don't we have him come out and speak and, and we'll have a panel discussion afterwards. And uh, it sounded like a great idea, so we kind of, you know, we didn't know anything about putting on an event, and we just decided to do it, and so we got, you know, him to come out, and it was kind of um, just a, a great way to, to, we always wanted to kind of meet him and, and a lot of other people out there were doing great work out there, and um, so... You know, ha having having these people, I mean, if we had, I think we said back then, if we could just uh, we did the events almost as a way to get to the people to come out and just hang out with them. Yeah. So, um, and that's, I think, um, that and the fact that, that it's such a casual event that speakers and attendees, you know, can just talk to each other and stuff. There's not like this big separation from these, you know, in these gigantic not events. Not a hierarchy. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very, it is a very structured format. It's not in any way an unconference. Do you have any unconference like, yeah. sessions or? Well, um, Matt Howie of Metafilter was thinking that he said he he emailed me some ideas and I really liked the ideas of trying to do a little different format for it. I mean, with bar camps going on and and those kind of mm -hmm. following that model. But um, I don't know. It's um, it's it's kind of hard to. It's been a kind of a hard adjustment for us to try to figure out how to to change the format in a way that will allow in a multi-track, you know, multi-room kind of a of well, a setting to do. Especially when you have you're expecting roughly a thousand people. When you have like a hundred, two hundred people, yeah, you can kind of pull that off. But that many people, it's like herding cats and. Yeah, it is, uh, and you know the logistics of getting all those people. I mean, our stage manager Ross Olson, who's been doing it for from almost the beginning now, um, you know, he almost like I think pulls his hair out 
during those days <laughs> that we were doing the conference. But um, it's tough. I mean, it's it, putting on a conference. It take us took us nine years to really get down to the point where we could actually get everything prepared far enough ahead of time to really make it run super smoothly and so that people can just have fun during the conference and it's not, you know, a painful ordeal. Um, so. So when do you start working on it? It it runs in <laughs> Stephanie is laughing yeah. in the peanut gallery there. <laughs> when does it start? Does it start as soon as the previous year ends? Uh, actually, um, we're already planning for 2010 now, oh. and so it's like me and Halloween. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it, it's kind of it doesn't end really, and 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 that and that's the fun thing about it too. I mean, because we just it gives you know reason to talk to people and and to and you, you, we just have to always plan. I mean, we have 50 speakers. You know, for crying out loud, you got to kind of figure out how you're gonna make it all work and some people you don't want to have back every single year you know you want to give it a little bit of a break and and uh and so you know trying to plan for the years um you kind of want to have people like you know that guy next you know 2010 and maybe this person in 2011 after they launch and mm -hmm. you know that kind of a thing so um so it's it's you know it's kind of a moving you know organic kind of thing that we just we just keep on you know going and filing things in our drawers of you know this is going to be this person would be great or you know mm -hmm. i think this year too is like we've got one of the one of the speakers um who we had a couple of years ago daniel shutsmith uh he works with the the barbarian group in new york and he said uh uh we we're having a hard time we we're trying to get a hold of the threadless guys and have them speak mm -hmm. and um and i said i was talking to him and i said uh you know they're not returning my emails, and um, usually it's not too bad. I can get get a hold of somebody, and they'll let us know if they can't do it. And he said, "Hold on a second. And then, like within thirty seconds, they emailed me and said, "Oh, we're so sorry. We're going to be in Australia. We can't do it this year. So have us back next. You know, in two thousand ten, we'll do it." So good reason, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Australia. That's fine. <laughs> so. so, what would you say is the big draw this year? What you know, with the economic crisis and people not turning out as much, what would you say is still compelling people to come? Or what's a good reason that people should still be coming? Well, people are still coming. It's, just, you know, uh, we, we talked to um, uh, Sean Lowry at Inatech, and he said, uh, hey, hey, buddy, uh, um, even's the new growth this year. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and, uh, and I, you know, it's just that we, we planned, you know, well in advance that we were going to grow it, uh, you know, a a big in a big way this year mm -hmm. so so we're just basically you know buckling down and trying to get as close as we can to that number but um and i think we'll we'll get pretty close but um it it's um you know it, it it's just something where you you can't you can't you know just give up and you know i think the theme this year is is just going to be innovate continue innovation and you know, exploring the future. And we have, uh, you know, a lot of speakers doing kind of some, some, some things that we, because we have more, um, slots, a little from more slots available this year, we, we took some, some sessions that we thought that, that looks, that sounds really good. We haven't seen that person speak before, but we'd like to give them a try. Mm -hmm. So, and then we also took some people that we just couldn't figure out a way to fit them into the schedule because of the way it is. We, it, we try to have, um, a kind of an even balance in multi-track so that you never have the, if you're, a t if you're, if you kind of tend to follow a tech track, mm -hmm. you never have two competing tech speakers at the same time. You kind of have design user experience strategy and then, you know, something else. And so we took, a took on some more experimental, you know, we thought just kind of people that, that, didn't really fit neatly in any of the sessions, but really had some great ideas. And so we created that kind of more experimental track. And we've got some people in there that are doing some things. And uh, although it's not totally experimental, uh, uh, Amber Case is doing one on uh, cyborg anthropology. Um, and we just, you know, just picked up a lot of sessions that we just thought, yeah, I'd really like to see that, I'd, you know, let's mm -hmm. just take a chance. So. so you have the experimental track, and then obviously you have the tech track. Mm-hmm. And at Web Visions, what does the tech track consist of? Um, tech track usually consists of, and it has 
been kind of uh, usually about programming to, uh, uh, about uh, uh, kind of getting a little bit more into um, you know the uh, development side mm -hmm. of of the web and so you'll see you know see it there'll be CSS or uh, you know Ajax or you know other kind of technologies mobile you know uh, um, and that'll kind of fit in kind of into that area so and then there's the design track designs usually kind of more the visual side mm -hmm. of it and it, could, it can be um, also um, more kind of uh, user experience as well mm -hmm. so. so end user yeah yeah and then business the business you know they, they usually the business side is, is those are the more strategic sessions mm -hmm. so we'll do sessions um, on uh, planning, project management, uh, you know, uh, marketing, you know, we, we, the conference kind of has about three types of people and the pretty uh, attendees, pretty evenly distributed. Uh, there's the marketing communications people and the C, C level mm -hmm. attendees who kind of want to want to get a good a high level view of what's going on. And we've have the tech people who are really usually, you know, programmers or developers. And then we have the design people that are either, you know, vis visual design or user centered design, you know, usability, uh, user experience people. So, um, so we have, you know, uh, enough sessions, hopefully, where those kind of people can, you, some people can maybe, if you're non technical, you might want to skate over into a session um, that has more of a technical uh, focus, just so that you can hear you know, uh, somebody talk about the future of a certain subject. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine said, back in New York, he said, uh, sometimes you don't have to understand something. You just have to kind of absorb it for a while. And I believe in that 100%. <laughs> I, so. I really, I think that's, I try when I go to, to something, I always try to find something unfamiliar to, uh, to focus on just because if, if for no other reason you're expanding your horizons that way. Oh. Speak up. Speak up. Oh. They say that you need to speak up. Oh. Yeah, oh. I think we're okay. Yeah, we'll. It'll it'll be all right. Yeah. Um. So, we've done. We've talked about the huge list of speakers. Some very familiar names in Portland. Some familiar yeah. names outside of Portland. And you've got your keynote speakers. And were there usually three tracks? And the experimental track is completely a new thing. Or. Well, we. I think. Uh, we were looking back, and uh, you know second third and fourth year i think we only had up to about 12 speakers and so they really were you know we did try to f have them focus on different type you know technology design mm -hmm. user experience but now that we have so many speakers we we really um we try to i think the experimental track is kind of a is a new thing just because we have a bunch more people um uh and we can expand it out and we we've got a bigger we took we took the whole uh, B series meeting rooms over at the convention center. So we've got, uh, you know, like six rooms we can we can pull people in and have mm -hmm. tracks running at the same time. So um, even though they kind of fit into those three areas, there's there's, you know, uh, other topics that we can kind of fit in there as well. So it's a little different this year. It's a little bigger. So what, how many speakers did you have last year? Fifty? You, you said fifty. I think we had. Um, we had, no, we had, uh, fewer rooms and so we probably had around, you know, 40. So we have about 10 more speakers this year. And does that kind of account for the extra track? Or? Yeah, that's, that's kind of where the experimental can pull in and some of the other topics that we wanted to cover. So we is, just have m more space for that. Is there anything else that's new this year? Well, we decided to do, um, it, we moved it to a three day conference. And so we have, uh, workshops, half day workshops all day, just by themselves the first mm -hmm. day and um and we've we've got 10 of those and so we've expanded out greatly the number of workshops we were adding so the first day is just the keynote the lunch and the workshops. actually the f the first day is just workshops and lunch 2.0 and then the next day the the thursday is uh, just a day dedicated to sessions and panels mm -hmm. and friday is the same thing and so we have keynotes on thir and and panels and sessions on Thursday and Friday. So absolutely no speakers at all. Just workshops. On, Just workshops. On wow. Wednesday. Yeah. And lunch, of course. Yes. 
Everyone's very excited yes. about the lunch. <laughs> Who doesn't like lunch? <laughs> I, yeah, I like lunch depending on what it is. <laughs> no, yes. that's not true. I just like lunch. It's okay. <laughs> so it just uh, seems like uh, just such a diverse and such a large, I mean, you know, with all the different tracks and everything. I mean, it, it, it's pretty much the idea behind the conference is to kind of have enough material there to um, basically tailor to the attendee is that kind of how you've got this mix working yeah it, it's really worked well well just to be able to you know um, to offer uh, a, a lot of speakers I think this year um, and we we we're hoping the the idea would be that you could people would have a lot of choice um, that they could go to see as many things as they wanted to um, and um, you know, it's, it's kind of rare here that in this area, you know, with South by Southwest is, has, you know, lots and lots of speakers, um, yeah. over a period of, I think, uh, four or five days. Um, we kind of wanted to do the same kind of thing for here to bring some of those. So is that your model almost some, some well, South by Southwest? Yeah, a little, a little bit. I mean, it, it's a little different. I mean, South by Southwest, um, is really open opens it up to kind of anything they're not necessary they don't really a track oriented conference um and you know they certainly have volumes of speakers there and we we've worked with them for probably since the second year or third year and uh hugh and uh several of the people will come up uh hugh Forrest from south by southwest and come up and uh go to web visions and i mean i think that you know you're you're kind of reaching some of the same speakers and um that you'll get for both events and you know it's a kind of a speakers conference in a lot of ways because of the speakers get to uh see people that they don't usually get a chance to hang out with that much and you know and south by southwest is such a big event now it's huge now gigantic it's gigantic you yeah. can't you know yeah. talk to anybody or get near anyone or Kevin Rose has like a bodyguard or something like that. Right. You know? Yeah. But, uh, you can actually, uh, talk to people and talk to some of the speakers and interact here yeah. at web visions. Right. Yeah. In fact, like, um, one of the attendees, Oh, actually she was, she was a volunteer. Um, she went to web visions, uh, with, we had uh, BJ Fogg from, um, Stanford university up as a, as one of our keynotes and, um, she's working for him now. Because she, she, you know, nice. talked to him at the conference and they hit it off. And he said, well, mm -hmm. why don't you come down when you feel like you, you know, you check to take a tour, take a tour of the lab. And she, she really liked it and got a job down there. So and it's, I think that it's the networking part of it or just the part of the con making the connection is, is just about as valuable as attending. And that's a very Portland. Yeah. It's a very Portland <laughs> aspect. Well, it, it seems like it's good too because you have the the flexibility for the diversity of speakers right and disciplines yeah. where you can kind of go hey let's plug in all of these different people you know like an amber case or someone like that and it's like yeah you know because 10 years from now there will be cyborg anthropology by southwest or something <laughs> right right and we'll all be like plugged in running around texas with yeah. implants or something you know but i just yeah. want to know what track the bacon boys are on <laughs> The Bacon Boys. Yes, the Kevin Bacon and... Boys. Um, Scott. Oh, and Bacon. Jason. Those. those and Jason oh, not no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love their. I love their. Uh, we'll we'll their, get to that not... in after hours. Yeah. They had a great uh, the April April Fools prank. Uh, did you see that? Yeah, we were one of the. Oh, you were. Okay. Yeah, we were one of the. One of the uh, victims of the. Are you talking about the retweeting? Yes. I also have the the bacon in the two, uh, you know. Uh, oh yeah, 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 no, there yeah. was also some some serious um, faux retweeting going on. Oh. in which uh, apparently they retweeted me saying that I was going to quit Strange Stuff Live and that this was my last episode. Actually, that's oh. true tonight. <laughs> as a matter of fact, considering the Muggle performance tonight. After some of the technical tonight. problems we had exactly. this evening, Kemi Chaos may not be joining you next week. Doctor Normal was ready, but Mogulus was not. <laughs> yeah, great. So no, what technology. what tract are they are they talking? about bacon uh yeah yeah 
on yeah. the experimental track. Do, do you <laughs> actually do you actually see all? Are I they mean, going to bring bacon? People, do you know what they're going to talk about, or you just book them and it's like? Yeah, we just spin the you know spin the wheel you know and just give it. No, yeah, we know we talk. Well, I mean, to is it like, I could come is it and like talk jazz? about shoes. You know? I mean, and those are nice shoes too. Thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome. Because you can just say, well, you know, like in jazz, we hired the sax player and he's going to play a solo and yeah. it's going to be good. You know, I mean, is there some of that? I had a conference. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, there, there, you know, there's, there's a lot of good perform. You, you know, just you just you know, go for it. You know, what what do you care about? And you know, let them talk for an hour and fifteen minutes. Sure. I mean, that that's that that's actually a long the, time. That's to a talk. long time. Well, you know, that going back to what Matt Howard was ignite. saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. no, Matt, Matt <laughs> was saying he likes he. You know, the thing he liked about it was a lot of people don't have a solid hour just to talk about something. They just have fifteen minutes of really mm -hmm. good time, and then after that, it just you know evolves yeah exactly yeah. i was thinking an hour it leaves you a lot of time to put your foot in your mouth several times that's when the speaker yeah. opens it up to q a yeah that's well, the key yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it can get kind of quiet out there you know and, <laughs> you know for anybody who's ever spoken you know it's like uh, questions no questions anybody <laughs> someone else well you have your here? friends in the audience yeah. right yeah. to go oh yeah that's one of the plants oh god you better hope you have friends in the audience <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Ask these five uh, questions yeah. that no one asks. Yes, please. <laughs> no one wants to know anything. Do you do a lot of conference speaking yourself? No, you know, uh, amazingly enough, I just, I just, you know, try to organize things and, you know, let other people do the speaking. I actually just like to ha hang out with Smart the people. Man. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever spoken at, at one of the web visions? Um, no, I haven't. And when is that going to happen? Now that we've called you? Uh, you know, I for an I've hour and fifteen minutes. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe it'll happen. Uh. Well, it's actually getting easier. I think that maybe one day I'll be able to have enough time that I can actually, you know, g sit down and see some sessions and speak mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff because, um, you know, usually too much, so much running around behind so much, the scenes. Yeah, there's so much stress about it, you know, and and I just love it if I can just have a moment and you know, after all this planning, you think, you know, I really deserve to go to this session mm -hmm. and just sit in the session and enjoy it and uh and if i can see like six sessions then that's probably a, you know a good conference usually it's I like wish you much oh, luck it's, with that. thank you <laughs> uh, thank you um but it's you know it, it, last year i went to a couple so you went to a couple last year yeah so just if you could just get four more this year than four you had more. last year yeah. and maybe i'll speak even i don't know <laughs> next year <laughs> I'm fooling people because I've got Brad Smith from from Verb dot com, and so it's really going to be kind of confusing. And when I make my little show notes, I usually make the show notes and I give them to Doctor Normal, and I have a big note next to I have all the keynote speakers listed, yeah. and right next to Brad Smith, I have different Brad Smith <laughs> <laughs> written on it. So I was like, that's going to be very confusing. Well, you know, I'm, I've been really confused by it too because I get all these messages from Brad Smith, and I'm like. I don't remember sending that, you know, because I'll usually like CC myself on it so that mm -hmm. I have one at work and yeah. one at home, you know, and, and it was kind of crazy, you know, and I start deleting it. Like, wait, 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 wait a second. That like undelete, you know, that one is, <laughs> that's, that's not, not from me. me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I always often wonder about, and this is probably more of an after hours topic, but people who have common names like Brad and yeah. Mike, my name is not a common name. I've still not met anyone with my name, with my full name. I've met a lot of Cammies, mm -hmm. but my name is Cambra. Oh. I've met Cambrias, but never another Cambra. And so I always, it's very confusing to me when I'm walking through a store and someone yells out the name Mike. I'm always like, why doesn't my <laughs> can, husband turn? Can you do an hour him? and 15 on that subject? Yes. Because you could get the gig at <laughs> Web Vision. I could. <laughs> I actually could do an hour and 15 on that. There would be some babbling and definitely some and foot boots, and mouth. Right. So well, did, yeah. we, did we mention, I, I put the graphic up a, a minute ago, uh, May 20th through 22nd? 22nd. Yes, indeed. 8 to, eight to 5, 8 to 3? Uh, 8 to 5. Um, and uh, workshops on the 20th, 21st and 22nd is the uh, conference, the sessions and panels and everything. So. And it's uh, Web Visions event? Webvisionsevent.com. And we also have, uh, for those people who would like to you know, win the admiration of their peers, we have the Web Visionary Awards, which is... I uh, saw something yeah, about that, yeah, yeah. yeah. I brought some flyers, too. But, and that's uh, at the Oregon Convention Center. Well, the awards is at the Baghdad. Yes. And Ooh, the... Yeah. Wow. You nice. need to know your stuff. The awards are at the Baghdad, and the convention is at the Convention Center. Yes, indeedy. And the awards uh, will be open till a little longer. 
So awesome. go to, there's a there's an entry on the website about that. If you want more information about the awards, go to webvisionsevent.com. Thank you so much for joining us, Brad. Well, thank you. Next week, please come back. Hopefully, uh, Mogulus will be working and we'll be joined by Brian Westbrook. Good night, everybody.